Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. We just got over 100 subscribers and I'm really grateful to everyone who's joined in the last three weeks since I started this channel. Hopped on, watched some videos, liked, subscribed, commented, got a lot of great feedback. Uh, you might also notice I'm not wearing the headset anymore because I got a new mic, got a Blue Yeti. I thought, you know, I got some feedback that my mic wasn't great, which it wasn't, and uh, I decided to splurge on the, the mic after getting to 100 subs. So hopefully I sound a lot better now and uh, I'm not going to have that big chunky headset on my head anymore, so that's nice. Today we're going to be talking about uh, kind of a speculative tier list for Tales of Aria Classic Instructed. Um, I'll do another one for Blitz soon after, but I primarily play Classic Instructed. Um, Blitz is really good for new players, but Classic Instructed is definitely the higher skill format, the more competitive format, and uh, it's just more fun in general. In my opinion, Blitz can just lead to a lot more blowouts. Um, 20 life is just not a lot to work with. Anyways, let's get started. Um, we're going to talk about the Tales of Aria Heroes first, right? So Frostbite seems to be a really powerful mechanic. Um, Frostbite, if you've played in your pre-release, um, I played in, I think, three this weekend. I know some people that played all the way up to five. Um, cards are really powerful. Or I guess the token is really powerful, right? So uh, it makes cards and activated abilities that you control cost an additional resource, um, and they stack. So I was able to get, I think, maybe five, or I got at least five Frostbite against an opponent at some point. And if you have that much, you pretty much have to just pass your turn. Um, you can't really do anything. So if you can consistently get a high number of Frostbite against an opponent, uh, they can't really play the game that well. So for that reason, um, at least for now, I'm going to put Lexi in S tier. Uh, we don't know where she's going to be solved-wise, so maybe somewhere between A and S. Um, but we know Frostbite's going to be strong. Uh, she's able to dominate arrows, um, like give Frostbite, or make the opponent discard cards. So an ice-centric Lexi build uh, can deal a lot of consistent damage that's not easy to block um, and makes the opponent not able to play the game, right? So usually the downside with dominated uh, attacks is that at least you get to keep your hand, right? You get to keep your hand. You can only block with one card, right, or maybe two, but you get to keep your hand and swing back after. But with uh, dominated arrows that get frostbite, you keep your hand, but then you can't even play that hand in the first place or you have to discard that hand. So there are some build of Lexi is going to be powerful. She also um, hates on all the both the ice decks are going to hate on the already a very aggressive format very well. So the chains and the katsus and the other very aggressive decks um, are going to struggle a little here. Uh, next up, we've got um, old him. So I'm going to put old him in probably a tier. Um, he's going to be powerful. Uh, we just don't know quite how powerful. Um, he also has an ice stack. His weapon gets to threaten at least one frostbite every turn, just like how Lexi will give the opponent um, pretty consistently one frostbite every turn by flipping a card with that's ice in her arsenal. Um, so for that reason, I think both the ice heroes are going to be pretty powerful off the bat. Even if we don't have a solved version of their deck yet, um, they're going to be hard for the already existing meta to deal with. Lastly, we have Briar. Um, she seems pretty powerful, and for that reason, I'm going to put her in at least B, but I don't think uh, she will be as powerful as her ice counterparts, just for the fact that she doesn't get that frostbite token, which is so strong. Um, she's just another solid maybe mid-range or aggro deck, and she doesn't seem like she's going to stand out compared to the rest of the RD existing meta. Um, once again, I want to restate, this is just very speculative, just me kind of talking through my thoughts. Uh, I would really love if you all uh, took this uh, quiz or tier list maker and made your own in the comments or we had a nice discussion, right? So I'm just putting my thoughts out there and what I think the classic constructed meta is going to look like starting, um, I think, next Saturday, the, the 20 something -th <laughs> is going to be when the set officially releases. So uh, it'll be the 25th. Um, so then, you know, we'll uh, we'll actually find out within a few weeks or you know a few months. The meta doesn't solve that fast in Flesh and Blood. Uh, moving on to Monarch Heroes, I guess uh, Prism is S tier. Um, I don't think Prism hurts at all from any of the new heroes. I think they're all likely good matchups for her, with the exception of actually funnily enough maybe Briar. But um, she has a really good Guardian matchup already. 
um, and she doesn't particularly care about Frostbite. Um, her auras are all instants, so she can pass, the Frostbites will go away, and then she can play her auras, or she can just play them in response to the Frostbites. Um, additionally, the Frostbites pop Merciful Retribution, which is pretty funny, so when a Frostbite is destroyed under her control, it, if she has a Merciful Retribution out, it will deal that damage to an opponent. So, uh, Control Prism won the calling, and I think it'll still stay pretty strong. Um, Bolton is our other light hero. I'm going to put him in B. Uh, I think he gets hurt pretty bad by Frostbite. He is a deck that wants to run on zero or one resources. Like The variations of Bolton run very few blues originally, and they mostly just went with... Uh, like running a pitching a yellow every turn or trying to not pitch anything so i don't think either variations of his deck are going to be consistent on blues and if they can just frost by you consistently you can't, can't to get the otk off either he needs a full hands like you're discarding it's just going to be really rough for bolton against the ice decks i think um so i would have put him a before i think he might get knocked down to b here uh, let's see what do we have next we have chain uh probably still a tier um you know, he, he gets two new bad matchups likely in the ice decks that are both not going to be amazing matchups for him, um, but that doesn't change his other matchups, right? The, the cards in Tales of Aria do not affect most of the other classes, um, and funnily enough, since they printed a new Runebra Runeblade, uh, there is actually some good cards for Chain here. Um, Chain Duskblade seems nice, um, and he has new legendary boots he could use if those, if those seem to be better than Snapdragons. Um, so yeah, I think Chain will still be A tier. Don't know if he'll be, uh, not still be, I think he'll be A tier instead of S tier, I should say. I think the ice matchups will not be good, and uh, he'll have to kind of accommodate for that. Um, maybe not in the main deck at least, because it's only two matchups, but at least in the sideboard with the meta slowing down overall. Lastly, we have Levia. Don't play this hero. Uh, still don't play this hero. Yeah, don't play this hero. No, she's she's really fun and she can she can be competitive. I just don't think she has the full support she needs to be a top deck yet. Uh, moving on to Arcane Rising, um, I'm gonna put Dash down in B from A. Uh, Old him is a really really bad matchup for her, um, and I just don't know how she's going to survive in the meta. Actually, hold on, I'll, I'll put her in A. I'll put her in A. I think she'll do okay in a slowed down meta. Old him is going to be like a 20% win rate for her or something really poor, but uh, I think, a, you know, a control -y dash will do just okay, will do just fine in a slowed down meta. Um, so I'm going to put her in A still. I'm not going to knock her down. I think she'll do fine. I don't think, she, I think, she, like I said, I think Old him will be a bad matchup for her, um, but I don't know if the other two will be that bad. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm not going to say she's that bad yet. Viscerai, I'm going to bump up to A. Um, he has a lot of cost reduction stuff, which seems like it'll work really well with Frostbite because it'll reduce after the Frostbite's applied. So if you have six rune chants out and they Frostbite you for three, your three cost attack that's reduced by your number of rune chants, your rune flash, for example, will cost zero still. Um, so it'll go up to costing six but then review reduced by the six rune chance to zero right and it'll pop the rune chance when you play it still so for that reason i think this will have a pretty solid ice matchup i don't think it'll affect him too much since he has so much cost reduction in his rune chance and he had some really good support this set um i think the dusk blade will be his new best friend and i think the spellbound creepers will be the easiest for him to pop the new legendary boots so i think this got a lot of really good support um and I think he's going to be A tier now. I would have put him in B before. I think a mid-range uh, Viscerai, or maybe an OTK Viscerai, um, some variant of it. Maybe you could sideboard into one or the other. I think it'll be a solid A tier deck now. Kano, I'm going to put in C. We saw one of them, I think, get day two at the Calling in Vegas. It's a deck that is good if no one's playing Null Rune. And I don't think people will be playing Null Rune still. Uh, it does get completely hosed for the most part by Heart of Ice. Um, you can start going off in response to them activating Heart of Ice, uh, but that pretty much forces your hand at that point, and it still has Arcane Barrier on it, so 
the two ice heroes are going to have a pretty solid Kano matchup. I mean, if he gets even one Frostbite, uh, his ability, his, his hero ability costs four, which is awful, right? So he doesn't have a good ice matchup, I don't think, which is going to be for a lot of heroes, but, you know, it's still going to bump him down if they have a bad matchup. But I don't think his other matchups will change that much. And uh, maybe in a controlling meta, you could do some sort of control Kano situation. I'm not going to put him in quite D, but he's probably close enough. Um, am I missing a hero? Dash. Azalea, ha, huh, Azalea. Azalea's probably, eh. I don't know if the new, I don't know if the new support for Ranger helps her enough to get her out of don't play this hero. I think she still don't play this hero, and I think she'll stay don't play this hero. Uh, I think if you want to play Ranger, you should just play Lexi, who is very, very powerful. Uh, unfortunately, that's just probably how it is. Reinar, probably in C, C still. Um, he's not hurt horribly by frostbite he's hurt not great by discard but he's not hurt horribly by frostbite um he can just run a few more blues maybe do big attacks he already had a pretty high pitch count deck so i don't think it'll be great for him but i don't think he's going to be moving in the tier list the tier list overall honestly i think he's just kind of middling i think the rng that brute has until they make a more like you know until they make brute more consistent which i just don't think they ever will i think brute will be like the fun rng big whammy swing class that you just uh sometimes go crazy with but usually don't uh my sad katsu who is my favorite hero i think is going to be bumping down for from a or possibly s tier considering where you thought he was before to b tier he has probably like a zero percent win rate against lexi it's gonna be a really awful matchup and he probably doesn't have a great matchup against Oldham either. He has a, a lot of problems with Frostbite. And I know most of the people in the uh, Katsu section of the Flesh and Blood Discord have said they're switching. I'm switching probably to Oldham because I really like the his weapon. Winter's Whale on Oldham looks fun. So I'll probably be switching off of Katsu, unfortunately. I think he just has too many bad matchups now. And if the meta is slowing down... Um, maybe control katsu becomes viable again, but certainly aggro katsu is likely dead. Unfortunately, rest in peace. <laughs> um, Dorinthia, I'll put in B tier, which is where I would have probably put her before. <clears throat> she's solid. She's um, going to be hurt a little by Frostbite like most heroes. She's going to still be just kind of okay. Um, I don't see anything about Dorinthia that's going to make her stand out. I think she'll probably just kind of maintain the place she was before, um, being kind of an average hero. Um, has some really good matchups, has some bad matchups. Uh, yeah, I, not, not a lot to say about Dorinthia. I don't see anything that improved her a lot, but I don't see anything that made her worse either. Um, she probably won't have a great matchup into the ice heroes once again. That's why the ice heroes are so strong. I mean, honestly, I could maybe move old him up here. I just think Ice is that powerful. Um, and then lastly, we've got Bravo, who I'm going to put A tier. I think he was A tier before. Um, I think he got a good bit of new Guardian cards. Uh, Terra Sunder is a really powerful Guardian card he got. Um, he has the Shield, which helps his dash matchup now. So I he, he definitely got some good support. Um, it's not like a ton. Right? He didn't get like as much as you would have expected. Uh, he can't play Awakening. It's an elemental card, which is a really powerful card. Um, that would probably be broken on a Crippling Crush. But he, he's not insane, but he is probably maintaining his A tier uh, position. So that is all the classic constructed heroes. The little Blitz heroes at the bottom we'll probably do in a few days. Um, but like I said, I prefer Classic Constructed, and I pay a lot more attention to it. Uh, in general, the Blitz format will be at least similar-ish in terms of power, um, in terms of tier position, but obviously not exactly the same. I mean, Kano is maybe an S-tier Blitz hero, um, and obviously you're missing some of the other powerful ones like Ira. But I think this is a very strong Classic Constructed uh, meta. I'm excited to see it get mixed up a little, see some um, Tales of Aria heroes putting in some work, see a slow down meta with ice, people having to run more blues, can't go, you know, like I was playing in Katsu, like 50 reds or something absurd, right? So 
I'm excited just to see the meta slow down a little. I'm excited to hear all of your thoughts. Um, take the take the tier list and make your own in the comments. Uh, shoot me a DM or comment about what you think is going to be going on in the new uh, Classic Constructed meta. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting me to over 100 subs. And I can't wait to make more videos for you all. Have a great week.